Hey everyone, I'm Mariana, this is Impression Blend, and today I am back once again talking about the best films that I saw at Fantasia International Film Festival that just finished its 24th run earlier this month. If you missed the first part of my Fantasia 2020 coverage, I will of course have that linked for you in the info box below, but today I have five more films to talk to you about. They couldn't be more different from one another. I have documentaries, I have horror, I have drama, comedy, martial arts, there is something here for everyone, so let me tell you all about them. We are starting off with a documentary today and Clapboard Jungle is particularly appropriate here because this is a documentary all about the struggles of independent filmmaking. Here, a Canadian filmmaker and producer, Justin McConnell, documents his own journey trying to get his films made, trying to network and make important connections, trying to navigate this complicated path. The film also shows a variety of opinions from successful filmmakers, including Guillermo del Toro, Paul Schrader, George A. Romero, and many more, all of them weighing in on the industry and the challenges it presents. Personally, I always find behind-the-scenes stuff very interesting, and Clapboard Jungle gives you a really good look at how many different pieces have to come together for a project to just get off the ground. When we think of behind-the-scenes specials, most of us probably imagine a look at what happens on set, the quirks of the actual filming process. But here, McConnell dedicates a lot of time to what it means to actually get there for an independent filmmaker. All of the hoops one has to jump through to even get to shooting something at all. Though it does touch on production itself, and I do wish we spent a little bit more time there, most of what we see here is the pre-production journey and everything that comes along with that. I thought this was a very interesting and eye-opening documentary and the way it combines interviews with industry professionals along with this personal journey of a man trying to get a film made and trying to break into the industry definitely worked for me. Dinner in America was an unusual experience for me, to say the least. I don't think I've ever had this happen before, but I loathed the first 30 minutes of the film and then ended up really enjoying the rest of it, so much so that I am over here telling you about this film as one of the best of the festival. Here, a very angsty Midwestern punk rocker, Simon, is on the run from the police when he happens to run into Patty, a lonely girl with overprotective parents who struggles to fit in. The two of them couldn't seem more different at first, but then we slowly start to realize that they have a lot more in common than what it seems. The thing is, just like our protagonists, the film is abrasive and rough around the edges, particularly in the first act. However, it completely makes up for that as we get deeper into the story. Once Simon and Patty start sharing the screen, it's pretty much impossible to look away. The chemistry between the two leads is undeniably great, and the film ends up taking a turn for this Misfits United type of story, which somehow transformed a film I almost turned off into a heartwarming experience I was sad to say goodbye to at the end. It also ended up sticking with me a lot more than I expected, so it's safe to say that this was one of the biggest surprises of the festival for me, a coming-of-age story with a punk rock heart. I cannot stress this enough, if you find yourself feeling the same way I did in the beginning, give Dinner in America a chance and get past that 30-minute mark. My bet is that you're going to finish it and you're going to be as surprised as I was. 
The Block Island Sound was actually the last film I saw at Fantasia, and I am so glad that I ended up catching it. I didn't really know what to expect going into this one, but this moody and mysterious horror thriller grabbed my attention and held it until the very end. Written and directed by the McManus brothers, the film presents us with a number of weird occurrences. The fish is washing up dead on the shore, the birds are dropping from the sky, and the main character's father is experiencing blackouts as he hasn't quite been himself lately. What is actually going on? You're going to have to find out for yourself when you see it. The film consistently creeped me out, and I found a lot of the things about the tone and the story very unsettling. It also has this amazing and very memorable sound design that just adds to the overall atmosphere, making this already chilling situation even creepier. While the writing could have used a little bit more polishing, this still was a very refreshing horror thriller and something I can confidently recommend to genre fans, particularly because in this case, the slightly slow buildup at the beginning absolutely pays off at the end. That's something that's worth noting, actually. I really liked the ending of the Block Island Sound and how it tied itself into something that was mentioned just briefly earlier in the film. I think all of you indie horror fans are going to like this one a lot, and I personally am very interested in whatever Matthew and Kevin McManus come out with next. The Paper Tigers is a film I found thoroughly enjoyable, and I pretty much had a smile on my face the entire time I was watching it. The story revolves around three childhood friends who used to be kung fu prodigies, but are now middle-aged men who are more likely to throw their backs out than land a strike. However, when their kung fu master is found dead, they need to get their lives together and figure out who is behind this. As you may have guessed from the premise, the film doesn't aim to take itself too seriously, which is a good thing in this case. It may not be perfect, but it has just the right balance of comedy, heart, and kung fu for me. The three lead characters are very believable as a group of friends who have fallen out of touch and are now trying to reconnect. Their interactions are so entertaining and funny without being too over the top. They're just so much fun to watch. This is a heartwarming comedy that is also a great throwback to martial arts films with impressive choreography and a lot of charm. It has a wonderful ensemble cast that you just can't help rooting for, and I would absolutely recommend The Paper Tigers to anyone looking for a good time. While I can't give you any information about the wide release just yet, the film is going to be playing at a variety of virtual film festivals for the rest of the fall, including the Los Angeles Asian Pacific Film Festival and the New York Cinevision Asian American International Film Festival, as well as others, so keep an eye out for it in the future. And speaking of film festivals, if you are enjoying this recent festival cover coverage on my channel, make sure you are subscribed and you have your notifications turned on. I am also starting to release my reviews for the Toronto International Film Festival and the best movies I saw there, so you do not want to miss those. Plus, there's obviously going to be a bunch of horror-related content coming your way because it is almost October and we all need to fully embrace that Halloween spirit. So definitely stick around. Finally, last but definitely not least, because these are not in any particular order, I am closing off this special with another documentary, and this one made me feel almost every emotion out there, which I definitely did not expect. I was completely unaware of David Arquette's current pro wrestling efforts or his extremely controversial title win 20 years ago. I also can't say I knew what exactly exactly derailed his career and how much did wrestling play a part in that. 
So all of this was new information. This is what this documentary is about, and it was a bit of a roller coaster for me emotionally. You feel bad for him, you feel hopeful, you feel frustrated and annoyed, you feel worried about him because of what he's doing to himself, you like him because of the drive and passion he has, and then you don't like him because he doesn't take certain things seriously. It was a lot. I do wish this documentary was longer so we could dive deeper into everything here because there were a few parts of it that definitely felt underexplored. But as is, I was 100% into it from start to finish and by the end, I just wanted David Arquette to be happy. I felt oddly inspired by this. I am rooting for the guy now like never before and I found out that actually you cannot kill David Arquette. I definitely think this is worth your time. Most of you would find this entertaining and interesting. And this is something that you can actually watch right now because it is available to rent on VOD. I will leave my Amazon link for You Cannot Kill David Arquette in the info box below, but there is a variety of places online where you can rent this documentary. And that's it for this video. I hope you found it interesting. I am sorry I can't give you exact release information about a bunch of these. I would if I could, but if I do hear anything, I will update you on my social media. Keep an eye out for these movies in the meantime, and I'm hoping that they will be released to VOD or streaming very soon. Of course, a big thank you to Fantasia International Film Festival for making it possible for us to watch these films virtually at this time. And let me know if any of you guys are attending any of these virtual festivals right now or planning to later in the year and what are you watching. As always, a special thank you to all of my patrons currently supporting me on Patreon and an extra special thank you to the patrons whose names are on the screen right now. Of course, I am very grateful for every single one of you who made it to the end of this video and I hope it was worth your time. If you did enjoy the video, which I hope you did, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up, share it, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, turn on notifications as I mentioned earlier, and I hope you're having a wonderful day. I will see you very soon in my next video. Bye!